one day we'll have intro music, but like, not today. Hi, welcome to Don't Quote Me On That. I'm Kalina. And I'm Eleanor. And this is the show where we kind of talk about movies. No, today it's the show where we do talk about movies. <laughs> Um, and depending on what order this comes out in the other episodes we recorded, did not talk about movies. So no. this is an this is the first show that we're filming that talks about movies. So yeah, we're gonna look um, today. Kalina chose this movie because she's been telling me to watch it for like two years now, and I finally did. And I will never say this to her face. So I'm I'm looking at you. She was right. <laughs> I loved it. I listen. I know Eleanor's brand. I figured it was. I was a little worried she wouldn't like it because it is, like, it is technically a horror movie. But I figured it was like far enough removed that it would work. I I was a little bit worried in the middle. I was like, this is a little bit too horror, but it it, it did it redeemed itself. Also, I guess um, there are going to be some spoilers, which we usually don't have because we talk about like older movies. Or we're just I as mean, big as possible. This movie is twelve years old now. I, I think yeah. I think I think generally like seven years is a good cutoff point for it's your yeah. fault if you see a spoiler. Um so today we're talking about Jennifer's body. Which I also I, sorry, real quick, I also just wanted to say though, I the reason I'm gonna mention spoilers just because I feel like this movie has definitely had like a revival in the last mm-hmm. year or so, or like especially the last couple of yeah. months, I've noticed a lot more people talking about it. I think, uh, yeah, spoilers are still important to mention, but also, at this point, yeah. it's also, not like we're talking show, about a movie that came out last year, you know? Well, it's never gonna happen, I promise. We never see anything that just comes <laughs> no. out. So here, we take at least five years to catch on. Yeah. Um, no, the reason I said that is because I told my mom, because I, 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 I've seen this movie, but I haven't seen it as recently as Eleanor did. So I was like thinking of watching it just for a refresher and I was asking my mom if she wanted to watch it for me and I was like, oh yeah, there's um, Megan Fox and then she eats boys and my mom was like, um, I was not sold on the Megan Fox part and I definitely, she, she apparently has a thing about cannibalism, so. I'm the complete opposite. I was sold on Megan Fox and it just got better. Yeah. So this is my, um, I think my, like. I won't say I'm like a Megan Fox stan. I don't dislike her fan stan. Whatever. I don't dislike her either. Um, but this is, I think, my favorite thing she's ever done for sure. I I will say I don't think I saw Megan Fox act in anything until I saw her act in. Um, she had about a season, maybe half a season arc in New Girl, which is one of my favorite shows, and I loved her. That I thought she was hilarious. I thought she had a really good handle on comedic timing. I really like her voice. Um, and so seeing her in this, it kind of solidified that, oh, she's been good for a while. I know she was in, um, she was oh, in Transformers. Shia LaBeouf. Thank you. Yeah. And I like Transformers. I have no clue what happened in those movies, but I watched all of them. But the only thing I remember about, um, Transformers is that maybe it wasn't even, even Transformers. It might've been the Indiana Jones Shia LaBeouf was in. I might be wrong. He wasn't. Shabbat. He was in the last Indy. <laughs> he was in the last Shia Indiana LaBeouf, Jones. Not Shia. He gave him a new name, man. Yeah, he was in the um, the last Indiana Jones. Yeah, I, I actually I think I'm thinking of the Transformers. So or the Indiana Jones. So I don't think I've even seen. I think I've only seen Megan Fox and two. They things. were like they were like on all the time for some reason, and it's kind of like the Avengers movies. Like I know the general theme is the cars are actually aliens that turn into cars. But like that's that's about as far as I got in in comprehension. <laughs> All embarrassingly enough, the only thing I know from um, Transformers I learned from Brooklyn Nine Nine, um, because there's an episode where Drake, uh, Jake, Jesus Christ, just give it I don't everyone know anybody's new names name. today. <laughs> Jake Peralta does trivia about the Transformers, and I think the evil ones are called Decepticons. Which they yeah. don't try very hard. No. Um, <laughs> you know, you gotta... Hey, look, if it works, you gotta stick to it, right? That's true. You know, anyway. first thought, best thought. Jennifer's body. Jennifer's that body. That is what we're talking about, not Transformers. Yes. Side I note, think... Megan Fox was in Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. The movie? Okay, alright. I love the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. Okay, sorry, Jennifer's body. Was she a one. turtle? 
No, she was like their like sidekick. They always have like a lady sidekick, which like I have a lot of questions about, but also if four giant turtles were like, do you want to fight crime? I'd probably say yes. Yeah. I think, um, okay, Jennifer's body. Jennifer's body. I think <laughs> I would like to start, um, so I said, I was talking to Kalina, um, when I watched this movie, I didn't tell her a lot of my thoughts just because, um, you know, blind react, all that. Um, I told her that I wanted to tell her who my favorite character was, but I didn't want to tell her because I wanted to make her guess on camera. So Kalina, who do you think my favorite character from Jennifer's body is? I want to tell you, I told Eleanor off the bat I knew for a fact who her favorite character was before she even saw the movie. So I'm pretty sure it's the, um, the, you know, it's a good question is, do I know his name? It's the, the guy, she, the second dude she kills, um, <laughs> te- he's got piercings galore. He looks like he just stepped out of Fallout Boy in their prime. And like, I saw that movie, at, like the first time I saw it, well, not the first time, but when I saw it, I was like, Eleanor, for a fact, that's, that's the man she's, she's going for. I was I was very confident in Kalina's ability to guess guess this. Um, she was right. Um, his name is Colin something in the movie. Yeah, that's it, Colin. His, Gray. I got a list here, but it didn't give me a description. His uh, the actor I believe is Kyle Gallner. Mm-hmm. He is in. He's been in a Criminal Minds. He's been in an SVU. He did a pretty long arc on Veronica Mars. He was in. A, he's been in almost every one of my favorite shows. And I think he is just the cutest boy to ever exist. And seeing him do like that varsity jacket um, over like this punk look and then that maroon and black striped blazer, it was like (laughs) Joe Jonas, Pete Wentz (laughs) daydream. Oh my God. I saw him and I was like, I know you're gonna get killed, but I don't want you to be, but then he got killed. Yeah, he was, I think he was my favorite. I, I liked Jennifer just because I um it's hard not to it's hard not to like Jennifer but um no I was I was a little in love with him too I'm not gonna lie it was the like he was so earnest about asking her out and he was just so cute on top of all of that yeah um I remember I wrote it down oh where was it I wrote so many things down watching this because I couldn't tell Kalina while I was watching it um I think it was really funny how um, just the shitty best friend energy you got for Megan Foss. I thought, as somebody who had a really shitty best friend in high school, I thought she played that just so well. The whole thing of, um, I'm going to say no when he asks me out, except for my best friend said, I think he's cool, so I'm going to ask him out. I thought that was just yeah, perfectly you spent- horrible. Yeah, like, after a little while in the movie, you're kind of like, why does she, like, like why are they friends? And, like, when when Megan, when um, Jennifer first disappeared, she showed up at, um, what was her name? Needy, Anita's Needy. house or Needy's house? Um, yeah, also, first of all, the name does Needy. the whole town just call her Needy? Yeah, I think so. I think that's the power for Jennifer had. But, um, yeah, when the first time she shows up at Needy's house in the night and she, like, eats the chick, like, I was like, I wouldn't let you in. You, like, you're horrible and you just disappeared. And, like, to be fair, it, she didn't disappear. It wasn't her fault that time. But, like, nine times out of ten it was. And I wouldn't have let her into my house. Yeah. Um, my favorite part was when she took, um, what was his name? Colin? Colin, yeah, mm-hmm. when it was when she took um, Colin's pants off and it hit the floor and she said, nice hardware, Ace. That I thought that was very funny. Uh, no, I thought, well, that wasn't, okay, it was one of my, I thought that was just very funny. I, I, I don't know, I love this whole movie. I cannot <laughs> believe it took me this long to watch. See, the worst part about the, me liking this is that it means you were right. <laughs> and as always always right my favorite part of the movie i think was at the end and she asked if she got i don't remember the exact line but she asked if she got all of her supplies from home depot how very butch Uh, i write i wrote this down because i love it too she (laughs) said do you buy all your murder weapons at home depot god you're butch i thought that was fun and i think i think even though the scenario like would not happen in real life i presume ever it was very realistic dialogue mm-hmm. between the two of them, especially in scenes like that. Yeah, I thought, um, I actually made a note, at the beginning, I th- when they were, especially when they were talking, like, at the lockers, mm-hmm. I thought there was a little bit of a, 
oh, the person who wrote this um, definitely hasn't been a teenage girl for a long time. Like, I mean, granted, we weren't teenage girls. We weren't like high school girls in the 2009s. The, the one 2009. But <laughs> I... <laughs> I, I don't think I ever knew that that salty meant beautiful. Like that I might never just be knew because that, yeah. salty means something completely different to us. Mm-hmm. But I don't know, she said it like it was something everybody knew, and maybe it was just because we were what nine Seven, and ten nine, in two thousand nine. Yeah. yeah, but I, that took me a little bit to get over. But other other than the like somewhat dated cultural references, I thought the dialogue was was fairly spot on. Yeah, because I I think films in general, and especially like horror films, have a tendency to like make things sound very poetic, and they like try to take it to another level, and that's just not how people talk, especially not teenage yeah. girls. And I think it's and if you've been friends for so long, like Eleanor and I have only been friends for a short time, and we could have conversations that would just cut off halfway through because we know what the other person's saying. Yeah, so if you've been friends for that long. It would. It, I, I felt like they were very in sync with each other for they were. the characters they're playing. I will say there was one. There was one line that, that I had to write down just because it made me laugh so hard. It was when um, it was the scene where we finally saw Jennifer actually get sacrificed to the band, where he, um, the main guy said, "Do you know how hard it is to make it as an indie band?" That reminded me of the Riverdale. Um, You've never known the epic highs and lows of high school football. <laughs> I heard that and I just, I, I, I had to just pause it and, and laugh for a couple minutes because it was like, that's, that's a good so, comparison. Like, that's just so out of touch that it works, you know? Yeah, and I, I definitely think that, um, that frame them, like, I think by the end we all definitely, like, no one, like, everyone was like, Jennifer, whatever, you're cool. And we all hated the, in, the band, and I think that, like, really added to like first of all like why would you like why would you sacrifice somebody to become a famous indie band like yeah and like part of so many other things you get is do. that you're underground yeah you know? yeah and they were already fairly popular i think like i thought it was weird what where did they live was i think it was called hell's kitchen was that it um devil's kettle hey that was close right yeah well, I hit it was the, it was you know anyway they whatever people they lived, in the movie like, got it wrong all the time too so you're fine <laughs> Yeah, like they were going on a major tour, and everyone was talking about how it was so they they were so lucky they were coming to Devil's Kettle because they were such a big band. So like one, I think they passed indie long time ago, but two, I think if they just waited it out, they would have been fine. Yeah, and actually, I I had to look it up just because I was so curious. Of uh, the two main guys of the Low Shoulder Band, they were actually in a real life band together. I don't remember yeah. the name at this point, but they were in a real life band together. And I think one of their songs is like a, a real song. So I, I did appreciate that. I appreciated that they kind of um, stuck to it. And yeah. according to the Wikipedia page, they were looking to cast um, somebody from Good Charlotte or somebody from Fall Out Boy to like or really also push Chad it. Chad Michael... Um... Murray? Murray? Oh, Chad Michael Murray. Name. Chad yeah. Michael Murray, I think, was the first man in pop culture that I had a crush on. Mine I saw Howard. him. I still love him. <laughs> Did you see Leo Howard in Kicking It at first? Um, <laughs> this is really embarrassing for me. <laughs> No, he played, um, I think it was Channing Tatum did, like, Conan the Barbarian, I think was the movie. And he played young Conan the Barbarian. I found that on a Wikipedia, so then I watched that movie just for whatever part he was in. So don't ask me what happened in the movie Conan. I just know Leo Howard was there. Okay. And then Kicking It came out about the same time, so. All right. I, think. I saw Chad Michael Murray in, um, the Cinderella story that Hilary Duff uh. was in. Yeah. I love him. Yeah. He still looks, like, pretty much the same. He just got facial He does. Hair. Yeah, I think that was good. Oh, my gosh. Also, just real quick side note. When I was watching um, Jennifer's body, I had to pause it a couple times to go um, help clean the house. And the, the first time I had to pause it for, like, a good stretch was right when um, Jennifer and Needy kissed. <laughs> I was very upset. <laughs> because it's, like... It's like the great, when I started watching it, I was like, this is like the great Gatsby. There's no way this isn't gay subtext on purpose. But, um, unlike the great Gatsby, they kissed. 
Yeah, and they kept talking. She, and then like, didn't Jennifer come over one time and she was like, we can play um, mommy and daddy like we used to. And I was like, what were the two of you doing? <laughs> Look, I think Kalina and I had very different best friends in high school. Um, I did have a best friend who was, I don't know how to say this, so I'm just going to say it. Um, I did get kicked out of a church youth group because there was a photo on Twitter of me kissing my best friend who was a girl. Um, so I can definitely understand the whole in love with your best friend thing. But also, like, at the same time, the best friend that you're in love with is... Um, I think the word toxic is thrown around just a little bit too much, but, like... That's it. Toxic. <laughs> um, my least favorite fact about this movie, for a variety of reasons, is that Megan Fox um, lost like 20 pounds and it was like 97 pounds when she filmed the movie because she was supposed to, you know, she's supposed to look very gaunt and like she was possessed. So she was like 97 pounds filming this. So, like, I didn't like that. And then also, I didn't like it because, like, I don't think I'll ever be 97 pounds unless I'm dead. So. <sighs> Poor girl. Yeah, I had to have a sit down for after after I read that part. Like, she has just kind of the body type where it... First of all, I don't think anybody can, like, look at somebody and guess how much they weigh. Cause just because I feel like everybody just holds fat and holds muscle in just completely different yeah. ways. But, like, oh my gosh. She was, like... I know part of the thing was, like, she was possessed by a demon. So when she was hungry, she was supposed to be, like, scarily thinny, skinny. Mm -hmm. But, like, yeah, I... Yeah, and um, and I felt a, not better, but like I, I thought I, I for some reason f think she's a lot taller than she is. She's like five four or something, and I always think she's like five six five seven for some reason. Like I don't think she like I think she's not. I don't think she's proportioned like a short person. Like no. someone was five four. So like yeah. after I figured out she was five four, I was like, okay, that's not healthy, but like it wouldn't be like someone my height going down yeah. to ninety seven pounds. It's still not like great because I feel not like great. she could. Yeah. Yeah. She was like, she was like 115, I think. And she's already a small person at 115 or whatever yeah. she was. So. I will say, um, just kind of like the whole, she looked like the hot popular girl. There was one scene, I think it was right after the, um, line quarterback, the, the football the guy, football player. right after he died, there's that zoom in and she's wearing this pink zip up hoodie with the pink oh hearts my God. I and then it cut me too. so bad and then it cuts away and then when we cut back we're in the school hallway again but it's this um this this black girl with bangs and she's wearing a neon pink hoodie that's very reminiscent of um megan fox's hoodie and i thought it was just really um smart for them to kind of give that juxtaposition of yeah everybody's dying but also look at her she's still the person that you need to model yourself after even though you know 10 people have died she's yeah. hot I thought I, think, I thought that was really smart I don't think I had like I was in the same sphere or circles as most people in, in high school because I feel like a lot of movies are written about um like it's very hard to be a teenager and it's very hard to be a teenage girl and while I don't think I relate to that 100 percent in retrospect I do think there's this whole there's a whole dynamic you don't understand unless you've you've been in that space, especially like in high school. And then the other thing is, I think a lot of times if you get stories about popular girls, you're watching them from the outside almost. And I mm -hmm. think they did a very good job. It was things like that. It was very subtle, but it, they did a good job of showing you what popularity was like from the inside. Now, obviously, there were some other issues. She was eating people, but like, like the little things like that. They were very subtle. Or like when the guy, um, what's his name, Colin, went to ask her out how like nervous he was and and mm -hmm. such and like or like what was it he said um there's a showing of rocky horror and she was like i don't like boxing movies and he was like yeah you're so wrong but i'm not gonna tell <laughs> so you so into it yeah <laughs> yeah like things like yeah. that i think i i think they were spot on for the the demographic they were making the movie about yeah i i saw like halfway through the movie i had to I, I had the feeling that women were very heavily involved in the making of it, so mm -hmm. I had to go check, and it was actually written and directed by a woman, which I think comes across, because I think you can really tell when adult men try to write about the plights yeah. of being a teenage girl. 
That's hard. Which, it, it is, yeah. I, yeah, I, I don't think my high school really had clicks. I, I don't think I'm the person to kind of comment on that. Yeah, just I'm the person I, to ask. I had two friends, and I was like, all right, this is, I'm good. Um, but, but I, I do think, I don't know, there had to have been, like, high schools where this was real, because this, yeah. You know, we didn't have cliques. I, we definitely had groups. Like I was, I was mostly. I didn't have too many friends. Like I was, for, I was on the debate team first, so I had, like I knew the people there. And then I joined the water polo team, and like I usually hung out with swimmers or water polo players. Mm-hmm. And I don't think we clicked up because there was like you know the yearbook kids, and there was a lot. There was some crossover between us, so like we kind of mixed and meddled. But like I did mostly stay on my own. But like it it's hard like it's hard to be a teenage yeah. girl like and i think it everyone is, yeah. goes i think everyone goes through different things like i don't think again i don't think i was in like the typical sphere not to sound any which way but like i don't think i faced the exact same problems the girls in this movie probably yeah. faced but I, the, the core gonna, of it's the same yeah like i i was in uh my school had the the ib program and i was in that so i was definitely in the ib program and i think Within that, there were a couple, there was a group that was, like, everybody knew just because I'm pretty sure one of them was, was student body president, and she was just the nicest girl in the world, which, Mm -hmm. of course, made her popular because she was super nice. (laughs) But, yeah, no matter, like, where you are in the social sphere, which, dumb. But, like, yeah, being a teenage girl, not fun. The core of the um, issue is always the same, no matter how it presents yeah. itself. And, like, and like I, I don't remember what it felt like, but I definitely don't, like, I remember I did not like it, and I don't want to go back yeah. there. <laughs> I don't remember what it's it not felt a good like time. either, but I didn't like it. I, I think I definitely had kind of a, again, the word toxic, but whatever. I definitely had, like, a best friend who wasn't... I don't know, like, didn't have my best interests in mind, I think, Mm -hmm. which I don't think Jennifer did either. Um, I did think it was really interesting, and I didn't kind I, obviously, I thought that there was lesbian subtext just because of who I am as a person, but I did really like that um, she was only able to be killed once the necklace, the BFF necklace, got ripped off. I thought that was just... Yeah. Brilliant. I, and I do think it it harked back to, they did like she did. Needy did matter to her. I don't mm-hmm. think she was a good friend, but I think part of that was it's again hard to be a teenage girl. And she was like she was doing a lot to kind of keep her place in the social hierarchy. Yeah. And like honestly, she could have dropped Needy because Needy wasn't very popular. You know that might have been better for her image. Honestly, like before the whole succubus mm-hmm. thing started. Which is a whole other issue we haven't even gotten into. (laughs) I think, yeah, I think her relationship with Needy did um, kind of serve the purpose of humanizing herself. Mm -hmm. Um, But also, I think humanizing herself was a little bit of an issue, given, you know, um, the whole demon thing. You can't really be a human and a demon. The best line is when Needy goes, you're killing people. And she goes, no, I'm killing boys. There's a very clear distinction there, okay? (laughs) Have you ever met a high school boy? Because Unfortunately. she's right. Except for my brother. My brother's a lovely high school boy. I yes. will... <laughs> yeah, he is. <laughs> I will say I did also appreciate how much common sense Chip had. Oh my um, god, that guy was the best. He was like, I don't think you should make friends with her, okay? Off the bat, she's <laughs> awful. Yeah, <laughs> especially when Needy was like, I'm pretty sure um, Jennifer's a demon. And he was like, yeah. Okay. And I figured that out 12 months ago, buddy. <laughs> yeah, since I met her, she's been one, so. Um, and I, I, um, when she lured him off, when Jennifer lured him off, he wouldn't, like, go, like, I think she was trying to make a move on him, and he wouldn't go with her till she mentioned Needy, I'm pretty sure. He was yeah. like, yeah, I don't trust you at all, not as far as I can spit. And then she was like, but Needy's here, and he was like, oh, wait, I like that lady. She's good. Yeah, I do. Again. Seriously, I know, I think her name was Anita. Mm-hmm. But 
I think we're led to believe that Jennifer came up with a name neat. That the whole town just ad I didn't grow up in a small town. You didn't grow up in a small town. Do, do small towns just adopt mean nicknames like that? I suppose if you look like young Megan Fox, and like even now Megan Fox, but like if you look like young Megan Fox, I'd probably just agree with whatever you said. Especially if I were around your age, I'd be like, yep, whatever you said is law. Please don't look at me for too long. <laughs> That's fair. Um, <laughs> I thought this movie had a lot of funny lines, um, mm -hmm. but okay. Into the, de I think I'm ready to talk about the uh, demon possession bit. Yes. Don't ever tell anybody that you are or aren't a virgin. If anybody seems invested in your virginity either way, tell you them leave. it's the way that you aren't invested in. If yeah, first of all, you leave. If you can't leave, if somebody's really invested in you being a virgin, you say that you aren't. If somebody is very invested in you aren't in, the, in you not being a virgin, say that you are. Like unless Well, I don't think I think the romantic worst part is partner they don't need to know. I think the worst part is she didn't say anything to them. I think they assumed, because she was trying to get with the lead singer, and then the lead singer was like, oh, yeah, girls like that always say they are, but they aren't virgins, but they are. And then when they were in the van, and Jennifer was like, no, no, I really, I'm not a virgin. It's like, please let me go home. And um, that's how they all got, that's how the, the whole shebang started, yeah. really. I'm like, I... <sighs> anyway, First you leave. of all, First step. Virgin virginity is made up. Second of all, if, any, if anybody is ever invested, either way, you tell them the other way and you try to get out of there as fast as possible. Um, I did write down, um, quote unquote, somewhere safer like my van? No. Say no. Second location, John Mulaney. <laughs> Which... Yeah, if anyone um, you don't know invites you to, well, I really think any secondary location is good, but like their van, especially their band van, no. Uh -uh. Mm -mm. Uh -uh. I think um, if if Jennifer was dating Chip, none of this would have happened, okay? He would have been like, that's a bad idea, um, let's go home. Or even if she had, like, talked to him for longer than two seconds. Yeah. I think Chip would, Chip would have saved the movie. Jennifer was dating Colin, he would have been like, nah, babe, let's go home and play with my Ouija board, and none of this would have happened, you know? Yeah. Um, Love also, Colin. I, I don't know if, um, like, you remember at the end how they had the, uh, the road sign for low shoulder, and they mm -hmm. showed, like, what it means? I wouldn't have gotten that without the little road sign because I had app I I spent the whole movie thinking that that was just the sh the, the worst band name in the world. Did they did they have? It's those not in great Florida? still. <laughs> I mean, yeah. You know, I Florida's thought they own. just like picked two words and were like, okay. That's that's how you make a band. That's how we ended up with this. Actually, what happened is I always tell I always give people advice and then I'm like, but don't call me on it because if it goes badly, that's on you, not on me. That's and we true. don't know what we're talking about here. We don't fact check, so I figured it worked. No, we do not. We Wikipedia check, which is different. <laughs> yeah, I got it open in front of me, which is why my face is so bright right now. <laughs> <laughs> I, I had to email myself my thoughts because I'm filming on my phone. Oh, yeah, I, that's how I fix the lighting in here because I have a lamp over here. But, like, it, depending on the time of day, it's not always bright enough. So if it's not bright enough, I put a white screen in front of me on the laptop, and that's my own. That's my, I want to make sure you all can see me, because last time I was FaceTiming Eleanor while we were recording, and she said all she could see were my eyes and my teeth, which is not good, so we fixed <laughs> no, it. No, it wasn't great. Um, yeah. Oh, for it, Halloween? It's easier. Yeah? No, you go. Oh, I was just going to say, my at my grandma's house, some, which is where I film sometimes, she has this lamp that has like three different light settings, so I just put it right behind the camera, and I go through until I look, you know, the most human, and I just go <laughs> yeah. with that. I was saying for Halloween, uh, my dream is to be in good enough shape to dress up as Jennifer. And then if I have a man, which uh, oh, oh. Uh, I want him to dress up as Colin. I know they weren't together and also she murdered him, but I think Colin's the best looking. So that was my own. Um, that's my choice. <laughs> I, um, I can't read what I wrote when I first saw him on screen because Kalina doesn't want me to say bad words. It's a family friendly show. I but um, I said, oh, shoot, I love him. <laughs> and then in parentheses, I put Beaver, which is uh, the first character I saw him play on Veronica Mars. 
Um, in that, he was also a murderer, which I, I'm going to say speaks more to his typecasting than my taste in men. But... but mm, other I'm pretty sure Halloween he's costume. Been, Yes. Sorry. Other, this is unrelated to this movie, but my other dream Halloween costume, this I have to have a boyfriend for, is um, if you ever seen, and if you all going to go look this up, is the Shut Up music video by the Black Eyed Peas. In it, um, Fergie's wearing, she wears a bra and then a blazer and then matching pants to, but like, pants that match the blazer. And, and then um, my boy Taboo, who's the best looking man in the Black Eyed Peas, and I will fight anyone who says I'm wrong, is wearing something else. And I don't know what he looks like, but he looks good. So that's my... Uh, <laughs> Second dream. <laughs> Sorry. You're fine. I I like the idea of like going as uh, Megan or not Megan Jennifer Megan Fox's character and needy as for Halloween, mm -hmm. but needy is just hot girl wearing glasses. I was gonna say I'm amazed by, and I can never pronounce her last name right, but Amanda. Seyfried has a very distinct look. I don't think she's she's not like Megan Fox kind of pretty, and but I definitely don't think I would ever cast her as, like she was in Mamma Mia. Like I wouldn't cast her as the nerdy girl either. But I think she has such a good range. She played Snow White, like she was again in Mamma Mia in this. Oh. Like I think she's got. I think she was Snow White. Yeah, because she sang. Um, no, you know it wasn't Snow White. It was Little Red Riding Hood. Because she sang this song for the movie. I don't know which movie it was, but she sang a song about the big bad wolf. But, like, she's just got, she's got the range. I think Amanda, again, Amanda Seyfried was actually in um, the first, the first thing I saw the guy who played Colin in. They were in a show. I wouldn't say together, but they were both in it. Mm -hmm. um, I think she's just gorgeous. I think he's just gorgeous. I, she it looks was, really good in her good. Wikipedia photo. It's if good time for me. She looks fantastic. She, I I think, man, she was in Mean Girls. She was in Mean Girls. She was in um, Les Mis. She was in Veronica Dear John. Mars. Yeah, with um, Channing Tatum. So, like, that was a romantic movie. Le yeah, Les Mis. So, I like, think, she's just um, doing Dear it all. Dear John was the first thing I saw her in. She was also, she had her own um, SVU episode where she was kind of oh. the, the star of it. Yeah. No, I, I love um, Amanda Seyfried. I think she's gorgeous. I think, again, love her as an actress, love Megan Foss as an actress. I also really like J.K. Simmons. Or Simmons. You just love everybody. I do. I I don't know. I do. I really like this cast, and maybe it was just because um, I saw it long enough. I, I literally saw it like yesterday. Um, that everyone has kind of blossomed into their own career now that I've seen. Mhm. Mm but I really liked it. But also the um, the guy who played Chip was the guy who died from the drugs in 21 Jump Street, which is a movie I've seen <laughs> too many times. They did a radio show on it, and I literally was playing it in the corner as we were talking about the movie because it's so good. But it's um, good what movie. I was going to say was one thing I thought was funny was the scene where, like, Needy goes to the library to, like, look up occult stuff reminds me of that scene in Twilight where Bella goes, <laughs> vampire like i was like that's and i guess it is a product of the time but i was like that you that was the best way you could have come up to figure out if your best friend turned into a demon i actually wrote down different scene but the um the scene where she kills the quarterback in the forest where you see the deer i was like that's twilight they did that. <laughs> yeah so i also, think they figured out where they got their inspiration from why not just go to the city library i don't think any high school library has an occult section well, I guess, like, a small town's got to be self-sufficient, so they're just like, yeah, we'll chuck everything in here. Yeah, I, you know, now that I said that, my, I think the, the library for the high school closest to my house is also the public library for the town. Mm. Yeah, but it might like, have been something like that, because they were, they were supposed to be small, small town. Tiny. Like, yeah, just, at, at the internet existed in 2009, didn't it? Apparently not. The, um, yeah. No, I'm just reading the reading the page here. If you have any thoughts, go ahead. Um, I thought Megan Fox had a lot of iconic lines, but some of them were just kind of 
I don't know if they were just a product of the time or if they were just kind of icky. Um, I do think, not to be like um, in today's PC culture, but like I do think some of the lines were a little bit questionable. Mm -hmm. um, like when she talks about how her dick is bigger than... Um, yeah, it definitely was of the time. Collins. Like I can, yeah, I, yeah, I can imagine people saying that then. But like, and you might get away with it now with like friends, but definitely not on a large scale. Like I don't think they would have put that. In yeah, movie for sure. Or like when she's like, "You give me such a weddy," and like that might not be a product of the time, but that was definitely gross to hear. <laughs> yeah, I don't <laughs> think it's a very like quotable movie though. Like you could mm -hmm. pull oh, out yeah. some good stuff. Um, got, um, I wow, do... nice insult, Hannah Montana. Which is my favorite. I have, um, are you guys rapists? God, I hate girls. And, like, <laughs> while I think that's half product of the time and half just, you can tell a girl wrote this. Mm-hmm. I think that's just very funny. Um, or when she's in the van and she goes, I haven't even done sex. I, I don't know how. Oh, Lying yeah, that was that. definitely written by a girl. <laughs> I, um... I I wrote um unless it's a priest say you aren't a virgin. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. Oh my god, don't don't disclose that information to like any Joe Schmo, okay? Especially if if any just random him. guy comes up to you and wants to know if you're a virgin or not, it's not because they're into you, it's because they want to sacrifice you to the devil. Especially look, if, unless if, that's especially the way if you're a teenage girl. Go, yeah. Oh my god, yeah. Um, um I'm <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I also wrote, yeah. if I don't have goth friends who embarrass themselves at my funeral, I don't want a funeral. Yeah, that was hard to watch, just, like, I was getting secondhand embarrassment there. I will say, I I didn't appreciate when the mom was like, I have an, a monopoly on pain. Where it's like, yeah, I understand that losing a child is uh, a, a type of pain that no... No one should ever feel and no parent is ever prepared for. And it, it's very hard to to be gracious when you're in that amount of pain. But I don't know, I just, I, I thought it was a little bit unnecessary to dim dismiss the friend's pain as a comedic kind of effort. Mm -hmm. um, but I also think that that, it, it was also a very realistic scene and that somebody who just lost a kid wouldn't know what to say and would probably feel just offended in some yeah. way or another about just some random kid showing up and and saying things like that but i don't know that kind of rubbed me the wrong way but also in a realistic way yeah i got you i um one thing i didn't love and i don't think they would have gotten away with either is the first dude she killed so when you see the flashback and she kills that exchange student is mm -hmm. I just think the whole way they portrayed him, I don't remember the specifics, but I remember watching them and I was kind of like, mm, that could have been done better. He, he didn't get a lot of specifics, really, which I think is, is a little bit of a saving grace. I remember um, when J.K. Simmons was first like, Abed, I think his name was, uh, yeah. from India died. And then in the flashback, she was like, does your host family know you're alive? No. Does anybody know you're alive? Oh, also, the answer is always yes, okay? If someone asks if there's someone waiting for you, yeah. if you're meeting people, yes. Always yes. I don't care how cute like, they are. Mm -mm. If you're in a taxi and he's like, do you know anybody in the city? Yeah, you do. They live there. They know the city very well, so drop me off where I say thank you. I saw Facebook post about that. Yeah, this all could have been solved by a little bit of common sense. Are you a virgin? Um, you seem um, very invested in the fact that I am one, so no, I no. am not. <laughs> I will I will forgive her for that, because she told them she wasn't, and they ignore her anyway. So yeah, That's fair. Well, I do think... You, um, those are the right steps. Yeah. If, if also, they're devil I love worshippers... The, I love the director's name. It's Diablo Cody, and she's a genius. I was looking at some of the other stuff she's done. She did, she did um, so Juno, didn't she? Yeah. Oh, she did this movie. This is how I found out Nikki Reed from Twilight did um a movie based on her life, and I think she directed that. Oh. And then she, like, in the movie, she and her friend ran away from a day, for a day and did a lot of drugs. I'm going to try and find it here. 
But Diablo Cody is just a great name. That's such a sick name. That's, yeah, I saw that. And I was like, all right. Everything's yeah. forgiven. You're good. Um, also, yeah. just real quick while you're looking, Moose Hoof Coffee. I don't know if it's just because I'm not from Minnesota, Ohio, the Midwest region. Moose Minnesota. Hoof Coffee sounds like a really cool place. There's, um, I know there's a coffee place called Caribou Coffee. I've never been there, but there's one in uh, Tempe, and it just sounds really fun. Like, maybe not fun enough, because the guy's like, do you want to work at Moose Hoof Coffee for the rest of your life, or do you want to make it as an indie band? And, like, if those are the two options, sure, indie band. But, like, Moose Hoof Coffee sounds cool. And oh, I'm pretty I sure have you can news. make a fairly decent wage. What's up? Sorry, first thing, um, going to Arizona ruined me because I was introduced to Dutch Bros, and I'm not gonna recover from the fact that I can't go to Dutch Bros. But, um, so she directed Burlesque, Diablo Cody. Guess what else she's directing, this, um, TV show? What? The Powerpuff Girls. Well, I'm <laughs> sorry, she, sorry, she's writing and executive producing it. That's cool! I might have, we might have to give that one a go. I have a lot of mixed feelings about the upcoming Powerpuff the one Girls with, reboot. Um, with, uh... With, it's got Dove Cameron. It's got, um... Oh, God. Donald Faison, I think is his name, from Scrubs. Okay. Yeah. Um, and then Diablo Cody is writing for it. So I just have so many questions <laughs> so, about yeah, who put this back together. So, yeah, soon. And we'll have what, to talk about that. What is the, like, what is the vibe supposed to be? I... Who's Nicholas Podon? Sorry, I'm on the Powerpuff Girls <laughs> Wikipedia page now. Like I oh, don't like Chloe Bennett is yeah. Oh, which one? Oh, she's not who I thought she was. Never mind. Chloe Bennett. There's this girl, and then I saw this this post that was talking about how oh it was very interesting how they cast the black girl as the aggressive Powerpuff Girl and the Asian girl as the uh, I don't remember the smart one or something. So I was like, yeah, that's very interesting. Which one's Asian? Chloe Bennett, apparently. And then, like, Eleanor and I have a lot of thoughts about Duff Cameron, so. Mojo Jojo Jr., who the heck is this guy? Huh. Not Mojo Jojo Jr., the guy who's playing him. What? Okay. Uh, he went to Juilliard, apparently. Okay. And he I was mean, in that's... Harry Potter and the Cursed Child on Broadway. <laughs> I have a lot of thoughts about this this TV show. <laughs> Wait, where are you? I'm not seeing. Mojo Jojo Junior. Um, it, at, on the Wik on the Wikipedia page under live action series, it's the last line. He was added on April first. Oh, okay, <laughs> okay, all right. Great. So yeah, we're definitely going to um. We're probably going to review that. I'm, I'm not saying my thoughts on this are bad. I'm just really confused on what the vibe is supposed to be, especially after the Diablo Cody bit. Like, I don't know where they're going with that. I... Kalina and I both have a lot of thoughts about um, reboots, but... Yeah. Also, it's a CW reboot, which... I also wonder, like, what's the, de what's the deciding factor in whether something gets a reboot or a sequel? Because there's a lot of sequels nowadays. Like, they did the Shark Boy and Lava Girl sequel. And then why do you decide some things need to be remade? You know what I mean? Or, like, um, what is it? Tom and Jerry is doing a yeah. reboot with Chloe Grace Moretz. Or, like, you've got Space... They're making Space Jam 2, like, a sequel. But then you've got Jumanji, which... I think Jumanji did their sequel pretty well. Like, it updated it. I think it was based I, on a video yeah. game instead of a board game. It was. I thought that was smart. Um, I watched both of the Jumanjis. I thought they were they were quite funny. I will admit, I've never seen the original Jumanji. <laughs> Shocker. Yeah. No, yeah, I did. I watched it in class, so I didn't pay attention, but I did see it. Yeah, I think Jumanji... I think... If you're going to do a sequel one, you can't... I was talking to my mom about this, like a reboot. I think a good example is Aladdin. I was saying how you can't go in, and I hate when actors go in and, like, try to imitate something. Like, I think Will Smith, the best part of Will Smith's genie was he wasn't going and saying, okay, I'm going to do a Robin Williams genie. 
just in person because I don't think that would have worked for him with Juan Will Smith mm -hmm. has got a personality of his own he's very you know he, I think he's um I don't know how to, else to explain it you know how you have like the author in film like a direct film director i think he's kind of like that as an actor like there's always an element of will smith in his characters for the most yeah part. i think he he's definitely found a way to kind of put himself into every role yeah yeah so i think that was well done or like jumanji was like okay we're just going to kind of modernize this in the sense that now the game's and and, and i think it also led to the it lent to the lore of the game because instead of the game just being a board game the game would transform so I thought also yeah. I didn't know Nick Jonas was in that movie so I went to go see it in theaters with my cousins and I, was, <laughs> yeah, I had a great time great he time he showed up and I was like alright I'll, I'll keep watching I thought it was just a cameo and then he was there for the rest of the movie so I was very excited about that but anyway I just wonder what the line is because I think some things that get a sequels now sequels nowadays would have been either better off being left alone or a reboot whereas vice versa I think some things that get a reboot might have been better off just expanding on that and kind of kind of going off yeah, to the left, I, but not imitating. I, I think, yeah, the line between a, a reboot and a sequel, I don't know who makes that decision, but sometimes it's better to leave it as a sequel because, I mean, I, I want to reference Ghostbusters, but I never saw that. I just, I never saw either of them, but I feel like it's just a little bit too... Soon and I think I think it's like it? yeah I think it's like the CGI thing we talk about all that time it's mm -hmm. just like when CGI first cited I'm gonna have to repeat this every time because I don't know what order these episodes come out in but I think when CGI first started it was a lot better because they were like oh there's this new tool let's test the limits and see what we can use it for to the best of our ability yeah and now, and now it's like it's oh that's like... super easy mm -hmm. and I think that na I think in the same vein sequels and reboots are just the thing to do rather yeah. than I think, I think rather than, I think they're like trying to capitalize on, let's say people our generation, right? They're trying to capitalize on things they liked when they were younger versus instead of making new things that align. Cause like as much as I liked Powerpuff Girls and Tom and Jerry, that's not my jam anymore. You know what yeah. I mean? There's very few things that you could reboot that I would like hands down 100% watch with no questions. And I think they're just like sequels and reboots are the thing to do now. So everyone's doing them. I think it, it definitely started with kind of all of the Disney live action remakes. Mm -hmm. And I think um, making it in a different medium is a little bit different than just going, oh, here you go. And that like, made sense. How uh, old are those movies? Yeah. Like those Cinderella? Super old. The, first, yeah. the first Disney movie was Snow White. So tell me when that one came out. That makes sense. I don't think they remade Snow White. But like those make sense. To yeah. make. Don't remake the movie. I, I'm old enough to remember watching. Okay. And then it's also like, at, at this point, really, there are only so many stories to be told. There's only, mm -hmm. you know, romance, horror. There, there are only so many differences within each genre. But there's a way to make the same kind of storyline your own without just saying, this is a remake of this. Like, you can, you can make yeah. a rom-com that kind of subvert, subverts the trends and is different enough that it's not just a retelling. You can, do, I would rather see a rom-com that tri tries its best to stand out from the crowd than just a, here's Cinderella the third time, you know, yeah, like, like we had. Not to knock, sorry, not, like, you know, like the Cinderella movie, the Cinderella story and like the one with Selena Gomez and then the yeah, there was like, Selena Gomez, good. there was Hilary Duff, there was. Lucy Hale. Yeah. Not to knock those. Like, those are good stories. They work for a reason. But I also think, like, Cinderella. Or, like, the Romeo and Juliet tropes. We're not re remaking Romeo and Juliet that Shakespeare wrote every single time. That's mm -hmm. the general theme. And on the idea of there's more stories out there, I think if you keep making, like, if you keep doing reboots and sequels, there's people who have stories that, like we couldn't even think of and you're not giving mm -hmm. them a chance to make this original bit because you're like oh yeah let's do space jam three like yeah and like it's it's really difficult because there's the whole thing of making a a more original story is more of a gamble because it might not sell whereas mm -hmm. people our age are having kids so 
if another Cinderella or another, you know, Tom and Jerry comes out in the theaters, we'd want to take our kids so that they have kind of the same feel of it as, as mm -hmm. we did. <sighs> but like also but you could if make it's one marketed, just for the kids. Exactly. Yeah. Like if there was a brand new kids movie and your kids saw it enough, I think whether it was based on Cinderella or Snow White or whether it was, you know, as new as it could be, if the kid complained enough, you'd take it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, like, I... Yeah. I'm even like people. us, I wouldn't want to take... I wouldn't want to go see another Cinderella knockoff. I don't have kids. There's not the nostalgia bit for me to take them. Uh, like, I have no interest in seeing any of the Disney live-action remakes. I don't have really in any interest in saying Space Jam because I was just a little bit too young when it first came out and now I'm just a little bit too old but I don't have kids yet where it's like I think our age we're kind of being left in the dust in a little which I mean that's fair not everything is made for us but it's also like we and get especially it especially if you think about the Disney remakes in particular there's and look, Disney, look, okay, no offense to Disney. There's more stories they need to tell. They told stories about white princesses with white princes for so long. And, like, I'm not going to knock them. They've got Moana now. You know, they did do Aladdin, which, like, they did do Aladdin. They've got, you know, they're they're making efforts. But I don't think because they're making the effort, they can just go, okay, well, we're going to make the story about a white princess again. And I'm sure, I'm sure they yeah. threw diversity in so, like in some of the remakes, I can't remember spe like specificities, but um, I know I think Lion King had a lot of African American actors play characters, but they also should have done it the first time. Yeah, well, I mean, the first time I don't think there were humans, so I think they get a little bit, a little bit yeah, of pass, they, yeah, yeah, no, because the guy who played Mufasa the first time was in the remake. So I'm just saying it maybe could have made a little bit more of the effort the first time. Yeah. Yeah. Just, and it's like... Or like Aladdin. I, I think they did. Aladdin was genius because they, like, and again, it was an, it's animated, so it's different. But, like, when you're live casting, it's not like they casted, like, kind of, um, I go into, I guess, they're Arabian. Kind mm -hmm. of, like, kind of Arabian characters for the main characters and then, like, focus their diversity on the background cast, which is usually what happens. Like, they made a, a genuine effort, but, like, I think you still need new stories. Like, oh, uh, that was it. Princess yeah. and the Frog is the other one. There's not just, like, black people in, um... What are... What's Moana? Hawaii? Moana's yeah, Hawaii. Hawaiians, I think, yeah. Or Maori? I don't know how to say that. Ma Maori? So, yes, please forgive me for butchering it. But, like, yeah. there, there's more than those two groups that exist. Oh, we got Mulan, okay, but there's more than just Chinese people. Yeah. I so thought, like, I I only watched Princess and the Frog recently, and I think it did a very good uh, good job of, it was focusing on, obviously, the story of a black princess who got with a black prince, but I don't, I don't think it was... It wasn't a black story. Yeah. Which I think is and, another important distinction, yeah. And, like, obviously, Disney has been incredibly whitewashed. I don't know. I don't think I'm the person to say this, but I think having a movie that was a 100% or like even even Frozen. I know in Frozen 2, which I also wa watched recently, there was a black character, which yes, it's good that they are showing some diversity, but it took place in like 1600s yeah. Scandinavia, like on the opposite end of the spectrum. I remember when it first came out, and they were like, "Oh my God, there's only white people in this movie," and I was like, "Yeah, that makes sense historically." Yeah. Like it wouldn't make sense if you know Princess and the Frog or Mulan or Moana if those were 100 percent white. Yeah, that wouldn't make sense. Like th those need kind of the POC characters, but you know, 1600s Scandinavia. I think they SNL did any. SNL did a skit about that because people were complaining and they had Keenan there and the whole skit was everyone asking him, but yeah, but how did you end up here? And he was like, oh, no, I've been here my whole life. And they're like, yeah, are you sure though? Like, anyway, I don't think we're trying like, to take on all of Disney, but like also just throw no. a dart at a map. Just throw a dart at a, like at a globe and pick that place, you know? 
yeah, like it's fine if you know you're if it's like Mulan and it takes place in whenever. What was Mulan? Was Mulan Chinese? Yeah, I hope so. If, I said you know, were. if there were said. only Chinese characters, that one hundred percent makes sense. We like we don't need like if it's China in the way back when before people invented travel. There's really it wouldn't make sense for there to be people who are white, people who are black. That's fine. Doesn't make sense for there to be black people in, you know, 1600 scan. I mean, I guess China. it would make sense that there's one in, well, no, in Frozen. It would make sense, you know, that there's one because he missed his boat, but like. <laughs> yeah. Like, it would, you shouldn't put a whole bunch of them in there. Like, yeah, and especially because Frozen is one of the newer ones, I would say that makes sense. They were just sticking to historical accuracy. Like, the older ones, yeah, they could have picked someplace that wasn't France. Yeah, like, Snow White could have taken place anywhere. That would make sense to have a lot more diversity. Yeah. But I, I, I just feel like if you're going to shoehorn shoe, shoe your place into one, you know, location and time, stick mm -hmm. to it. Whatever it is, just stick to it. And I think that that's a lot better than, you know forcing me the, we're not even talking i have about a lot Jennifer's more thoughts body. but like it's we're talking about jennifer's body i think it's a great film i definitely think we're like way over our time so i think it's a good movie i now that we're talking about it i think it it's one of the few films that keys in very clearly on like there's a specific brand of being a teenager i like mm -hmm. i like horror movies that do this that don't just rely on like whatever the creature is or whatever mm -hmm. is they tap into i think to things that unsettle you just just without you realizing like it, it, it um i don't know back it's hard to be a teenage girl i know i keep saying that but like i think that just be a teenager in high school just taps into a part of your brain that does kind I, of set you yeah. on fi fight or flight they did do a really good job of the main problem is that teenage girls exist there's also a succubus but <laughs> yeah like if that wasn't the like they didn't talk about oh there's a demon eating people it was, this tragedy is happening to the small town our teenagers are dealing with it and like the the succubus thing really didn't come until the end till she was googling it and was like chip i think she's a succubus and chip was like yeah i do it i couldn't touch it that 20 minutes ago i i did really like like 30 minutes into the movie somebody was like it's not gonna get any worse and i was like there's an hour left i think, <laughs> I think it is so. yeah i just I, yeah i liked how it was framed around that is these teens dealing with this thing the thing just so happened to be a succubus but i think if mm. you you could have subbed out a serial killer or something you know you could have subbed out succubus for something else and it would have probably still had the same effect i imagine yeah i mean yeah i think this kind of teen horror I, I do appreciate it that it focused a lot more on the teen than it did on the horror because I feel like that's fairly. Oh, I remember. I what mean, I, I don't want to say realistic, but yeah, what's up? No, I was trying to remember what movie reminded me of this, and I don't know if anyone's seen Midsummer, which I won't recommend to Eleanor because she'll hate it. But that movie Midsummer with Florence Pugh, that I think also tapped into, like, there was this horrific thing happening, but one, it wasn't like supernatural, and two, part most of it was the fact that this girl she was in a relationship with someone who she felt didn't like her she was like she had she was a little paranoid about that and all of that was coming to fruition while in the background they were crazy people okay and like i think the lesson is um don't go to sweden and then do mushrooms right after you land especially if you're black also stop harassing uh megan fox and machine gun kelly okay i saw this tiktok where this girl was like oh my god i ran into machine gun kelly and megan fox they were in the car behind me no that's called you saw them in the car behind you and you got your yeah. car to bother them or like i don't want to be famous where people are like like the whole conversation just started with megan fox you're hot yeah like, i i it's just we not can right see that. like move on there's i i think this is back to where we don't want to be famous talk it's there is i agree you give up a certain um what's what's the word they use it's a certain expectation of privacy when you become famous i agree with that that doesn't mean they don't deserve some level of privacy and consideration yeah. anyway that's all stuff for so box about disney and privacy yeah. but so we stayed on topic in. the whole time not even a little bit, but if you ignore the last like ten minutes, I think we're good. And we talked <laughs> about a movie, 
so we're doing mm-hmm. better. That's a check for us. What? Look, our, even our even our um, cutaway was about a movie or movies. So there you go. So what you complaining for? Okay, tune in next week and we'll talk about <laughs> something else. We'll talk about another movie. I'm putting it on the list. Okay, I'm not putting it on the list. I'm not that confident in us. That's fair. Uh, but anyway, I have been Eleanor. I have been Kalina. And this has been Don't Quote Me On That. We'll see you next time. Goodbye. One day we'll have outro music, but like, not today.